Patch 611 for Smite is offering $43 in downloadable content. Is that a problem? Uh, to be specific, they're offering eight different skins. So Bloody Butcher, Ymir, and Horrific Harvester, Abwash, are available in a chest. There are 16 items in that chest, and each roll is 400 gems. Swift Scurrier Neath, Whirlwind Tech Xingxian, Dawn Defender Thor, and Cute Cultivator Persephone are normally 600 gems, but if you buy them the week that they come out, uh, they are 400 a pop. Also note that you can get the Ymir and Opwash skins directly without having to roll for chests for 1,200 gems, but at that point you're going to roll six times anyway for the same price. Retro Rex Chalk is currently a uh, unreleased chest. We know it's going to be a chest, um, presumably the same 400 gems per roll. And Wise Wizard Merlin is a free skin, but you have to have already bought 11 different Odyssey skins. Excuse me. And then you'll get it for free. So all said and done, assuming that you get the Neath, you get the Xingxian, you get the Thor and the Persephone skins uh, as soon as they come out. And you get your Ymir, Upwash, and Chuck skins on the first roll. Good luck. And also assuming that you got every other skin for Merlin, that's 2,800 gems. Uh, to get to 2,800 gems, you'd have to buy the 2,500 pack. That sets you back 35 bucks. But you can't, you have to actually then buy the 400 pack. So you'd have 100 gems left over. But you've got to then spend another 8 bucks. So $43 total. Is that bad? I'm going to say no. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing for there to be so much DLC. Is it egregious? Yes. Um, is that basically like two-thirds of the price of a AAA game? Yeah. Can you get two indie games, like really good indie games for that price? Yeah, you can. And they're releasing this kind of level of content every month now. Um, but I don't know if this is... One of the, this is one of the things I hear a lot that's a big problem for, for high res and smite, and I don't know if I really agree. Uh, it really boils down to the question of how, do, how should high res allocate their employees? Um, you know, it, it's, not, it's not at all reasonable to say, oh, well, they should all just be coding and working on the new game. The people that made the skins, the artists, the voice actors, you know, all those folks... You, they, they don't know anything about how to program the base code for the game. That's not an insult for them. Um, I work in insurance, in risk management for a day job. If you told me, Dan, you need to go to a hospital and work as a nurse. I couldn't fucking do that. I can't. Like, I can't. And that's not because I'm dumb. You can say I'm dumb. But I'm not trained to do that. And it's the same thing here. These artists aren't programmers. They aren't coders. They are doing what they're good at. They're doing what they were hired to do. That's not their fault. So no amount of these folks will really do any. You know, these folks can't fix the underlying problem. The other thing to realize is that the coders, people that are to reprogram the whole fucking game isn't going to produce nearly the same level of value as adding more skins. You know, again, when these gem, when these skins, sorry, are 400 gems, if you just want the one, you've got to spend eight bucks for that skin. So every time that you say, oh, well, I just want, you know, I just want to get the Persephone skin, because that's the one out now. You know, because the new god, whatever. That's eight dollars. Um... A coder has to basically then, you know, reprogram the game, has to convince someone to do that. And that's a lot harder of a sell. And you'd need the artist to do it anyway. So I, I don't know if that's really the problem. Sorry for fidgeting with my hands and all that. Because high-res knows, high knows the data. Um, there's a study done, and I'll link this in the description box below, that they did with Fortnite. And... Yes, before you get in the comments, Fortnite works on a totally different scale. Fortnite's much bigger, but they're similar. It's Fortnite and Smite are similar because they're both free-to-play games where the microtransactions do not offer you a tangible in-game benefit. 
Um, you're not going to shoot better. You're not going to run faster or whatever. The study, the study that was done said that 70% of Fortnite players spent money on Fortnite. 70%. And the average person that spent money on Fortnite spent just short of like $85. That's a lot. So they're basically saying there's a 70... For every player that you get hooked onto your game, using Fortnite as your model, and again, not apples to apples, but close enough, fairly close, close enough for it to matter. Every time that you get someone there's a, that's hooked to the game, there's a 70% chance they're going to spend 85 bucks on the game. And they're going to keep spending money if you keep giving them stuff they want to buy. And it used to be with microtransaction content in free-to-play games, a uh, concept of whales. And way, to, very, to make it very brief, um, the theory with a lot of these mobile games is that a very small portion of your player base is going to be responsible for the vast majority of your transactions and your content being sold and generated as a way to reward them. Um, and that's really not true in this Fortnite model, and I think Fortnite's a much better approximation of what Smite and Hi-Rez look at compared to, say, like Clash of Clans or um, something like that. So when you have all, so many of your players that are doing this, you want them to keep buying in. And I think the problem is, like I'm going back to this onboarding, people burn out because a number of reasons. But Smite's not getting these replacements. Smite's not getting people to come into the game that are leaving. So these people that were spending, they were buying all the skins. You know, you all have seen the player that it doesn't seem to fucking matter. The day that a patch comes out, they already have the new skins. All of them. And you're just like, what? There's fewer of them. They're, they're being replaced. And if you're thinking that, well, I don't see this as a problem, it's probably because your account's like mine and you've got like 2,000 goddamn hours on the game. And you're, see, you're running into this. You're, you're running into more of these people that are committed for the long haul. Because you're in the same spot I am. You, you know, like these, you know, adding coders, redoing the code isn't really going to financially benefit the game. And high res knows this. You know, you're going to come, to, you're going to, in the comments, you're going to fucking scream and say, well, if they, ca you know, if they fix the game, more people are going to play. Look at you. You're you're still playing the game. Smite's buggy as crap. Smite doesn't work. You're still playing it. I'm still playing it. Not as much anymore, but I'm still playing it. I don't think there's much, if any, correlation between game stability and its ability to make you commit for the long haul, to be one of those long-term players. Because... If you're watching this video, you're proof that there's that it doesn't matter. I'm proof it doesn't matter. Um, so I think when you look at the all the downloadable content, they're making more and more of it because they're they're marketing themselves to a smaller and smaller and smaller pool as time goes on. So in order to get the same level of revenue that they used to, they have to push this stuff harder. They've got to push you to buy the Odyssey and spend 120 bucks to get all the Odyssey content up front. Um, knowing that some of these people are going to leave. You know, there's people that have, there have to have been, I don't have hard evidence, but there has to be people that have spent the 120 on the full Odyssey pack up front who no longer, who have just fallen out of love and just stopped playing Smite entirely between then and now. Might not be a lot, probably not a lot, but there's gotta be some people. So I think when we talk about, oh, there's so many skins in the game. Oh, there's so many microtransactions in the game. We're not talking about the problem. We're talking about a symptom. 
It's like someone saying, oh, that person there, he's coughing a lot. He's coughing. He has tuberculosis. He has goddamn tuberculosis. That's what he suffers from. He doesn't suffer from a cough. The cough is how you know he has tuberculosis. Smite's total inability to onboard and retain players is its tuberculosis. Its swarm of DLC, that's just a cough. Let me know below in the comments what you think about this. Uh, make sure to follow, make sure to subscribe, uh, hit up my Twitch as well. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree, disagree, what else you'd like to see about this. I'm um, still getting everything set up to start showing some of the actual onboarding process to kind of prove my point. But either way, take care, and I'll see you all around.